Well, hello everyone. It is Friday, October the 6th, 2023. I am Dale Delbridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. This is your status chat. And uh, Tennessee has an off week. It's a bye week, they call it. We have uh, University of Kentucky Wildcats playing against the dogs of Georgia. And we're going to root for the underdogs. In this case, the underdogs are actually cats. But I really like to see Coach Stoops' uh, his program go. He, they have kept him around for a while, let him build something. I think he's good for the kids. And I'd really like to see some, some uh, success there. Not that I wish Georgia ill will, but Georgia has squeaked through a few too many weeks, still being rated like they're number one when they got scored against by people who really shouldn't score against them. So... What we got going on, Alabama's playing somebody, A&M, I think, Texas A&M, and that may be a close game. Bama may be a two-loss season this year if they don't uh, straighten up some of that mess that we've been seeing, although we're seeing improvements. That's about it. So I guess that's all the football talk we got going. Oh, by the way, Duke in North Carolina, Grandma from North Carolina, both North Carolina and Duke have been doing pretty well this year for a basketball school, so we're going to wish them well, although they are the ACC. Okay, so now we got all that. Let's get in with it. If you like this content, please go to calldeldesell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to do some speculation, and except for this one graphic I'm going to put up right now that has our interest rates, it has almost 8% on the mortgage news daily daily rates, has 30-year uh, fixed almost 8%. So you know what that means. I'll tell you right up front. Y'all need to get on with the, get on with getting on with it. We need to get that house listed before we lose all the green before all the, holly, the uh, holidays get here. We need to get that, that house up and listed. So let's get that done. Now, uh, as far as we have for the regular program, now we do know uh, we have to talk economics is really more people text we talk about what things are going on the big upsetting news is this week was they ousted the california speaker of the house who didn't do what he said he would do and uh, we've got some reversals on some domestic security issues that happened shortly after they they uh, deposed him as it were and so that's some political action going on. All of a sudden, we're going to be doing something that, that uh, by appropriation, should have been being done all the time. Now, what do we see in the last two times that we've looked at inflation? Uh, inflation continued to go up in all of the indices, and yet the Fed did nothing. And they hinted that there may be one more increase this year. Well, it better be a doozy if you want to affect inflation. Now, we have certain things going on that threaten more than just inflation. I could I could give you the link. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll put, give the link from the Atlanta Fed as it explains what inflation is versus cost of living expenses. Inflation is caused by the government printing money. Deficit spending, continuing to print huge appropriation bills. That's what the fight's about. And whenever they print more money, they have cash because they get a portion of it out of there and they know where to invest and all that kind of good jazz. It's just miracle of miracles. They do quite well. But for the people like me and you who've worked for a living, anything we have as a nest egg or whatever, for the most part, it gets watered down because as the video on inflation, if you'll watch it from the Atlanta Fed, it's about 11 years old, explains that when you print more money, you have more money chasing the same goods because the GDP doesn't really grow. And when that happens, it just drives the cost of everything. But now we face another issue due to the energy policy where we're going to shut down uh, our oil production. And there are now some experts say that we'll have at least $100 a barrel oil, if not $150 a barrel oil before 2024. That's going to cause a cost of living increase because that's not really that's not really due to printing of money, but because of other policies. So it's going to get tough. Now, we didn't raise it the last two months. The, the Fed didn't increase the Fed rate the last two months. We're supposed to hear something very, very soon. And uh, with, in, with the, the jobs, they keep blaming it on jobs, but it's a total package. It's the printing of the money that did it. And they should have been very aggressive on the Fed rate early on. And they weren't. And so we've suffered a year, year and a half's worth of pain for almost no gain. There's been no gain in it. And I know what people are thinking. Well, Dell, if you sell houses, if you list houses, how can you be pro-interest rate going up? Well, I'm not. But I'm, I can't seem to have any input of them printing the money. 
and that's out there. That cat is out of the bag, and it looks like we're just going to keep going back to the credit cards over and over again. It's going to keep getting worse. So the only way you cure inflation is with recession, and that's politically a no-no. And so we're just getting enough interest to ruin uh, housing for a lot of folks, make it really difficult on people to trade homes, buy up, buy down, uh, whatever they're trying to do, uh, new home buyers getting in their first home, and we're not getting anything for it because all of the other stuff is going through the roof along with it. If we had have thrown the brakes on the economy by really being aggressive, like Reagan did back in the 80s, we could have maybe put a stop to this and we would have had the pain, like ripping off the Band-Aid early, but not for very long, and then we could have kind of could have kind of gotten back to life. So I want you to keep your uh, nose to the grindstone, looking at the news, the independent news, so you feel comfortable making your decision that, in my honest opinion, we're going to have high rates for quite a while. So that's why I say, call me. Y'all call me now, we. All right, let's get on to the last section of the video. Hello, I'm Del Delbert to Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel, Call Dell to Sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout and then call me and we'll set up your exclusive ad free account today. Now, if you remember, last week we had something that looked a little fishy that we had some numbers were not in trend to where they had been and there was a little bit more suspiciousness and they were both even numbers to the zero, zero, zeros or in one case just a zero zero so it looked a little suspicious being just what are the odds that we'd be perfectly rounded at zero on both ends and it was substantially off so we thought it might be an anomaly uh the previous weeks reason we keep these track of these things previous couple weeks we had 18,960 in the opportunities then 19,228 in the opportunities then 19,443 in our opportunities last week they looked suspicious at an even 14,000 so we thought we might have had some erroneous data but I don't make these numbers up I do pull them from the real scout system so last week we had 14,000 in the opportunities even that was down over the previous period we had 3,700 in the under contract still showing that was up over the previous period no down over the previous period and the ratio between them on the integer level jumped six percentage points to 26 percent that was 9 29 23 this week, 10.06.23, we have 19,611, it's more like it, on the opportunities, that's up over the previous period. We had 36.34, which is down over the previous period, and the integer ratio came out to 19%. Actually, it was 18.5 something, so it's close enough that it rounded over 19%. We only do the integer values. So we have uh, the numbers out there today. We'll need to look at the future. Honestly, uh, we skipped we skipped the Fed twice, skipped increasing the Fed rate, and the all the indicators were rising. We're going to get news in the next week or so, again, of what the, the uh, uh, some of the indices are, and I expect they'll be up again. We had strong numbers on the labor front, which means they're not doing squat to uh, combat inflation. Really, they're not doing any good, because what do you got to do to cure inflation? You got to have a recession. Everybody hates recession like they do invasive medical procedures, but we still have to do them. If you don't do them, you're just you're really just kind of playing in the dark, rolling the dice. You're gambling. So we've got a lot of we've got a lot of growth in the mortgage rates and very little to show for it on the other expenses that we're paying. So we know that the percentage that the PITI is on our current level of house pricing has actually gone through the roof, which means it's a bigger part of the income than we've had in a long, long time. So it's not likely to get much better. I would highly suggest that you call me and we get that house listed. And if you're looking to buy, let's get let's get you finding something before things get a little bit worse. And then once you get moving and settled, you can ride out the storm with the rest of us. So there we go. Appreciate you watching. And as always, since it's football season, roll tide. And y'all have a good luck with your teams. We wish everybody could win, although that's just not the way it works. Have a great weekend, y'all.